Welcome to Colony TV, the governmental educational channel for the town of Colony. I'm Mrs. Grownie and I'm your storyteller for today. I have a wave for you. Do you have a wave for me? And let's sing that song that goes with the wave. Are you ready? Hello everybody and how are you? How are you? How are you? Hello everybody and how are you? Yes indeed my darling. If you want to see the pictures, what are we going to use? Our eyes. Ready? Hello to my eyes, and how are you? How are you? How are you? Hello to my eyes, and how are you? Yes, indeed, my darling. If you want to hear the stories, what are we going to use? Our ears. Ready? Hello to my ears, and how are you? How are you? How are you? Hello to my ears, and how are you? Yes, indeed, my darling. Now the best part, we're going to warm up our lips. Are you ready? Hello. <laughs> Yes, indeed, my darling. Good job, everybody. Well, today we're going to hear stories about different places people and animals live. How many of you live in a house? Yeah. How many uh, of you know if I had a big pile of sticks, who might live there? Animal. What kind of animal would live in a big pile of sticks? Maybe it's a big pile of sticks in a pond. A beaver. A beaver. Would you want to live there? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So we each have our own home and we like where we live, don't we? So there's no place like home, right? Yeah. I'm in my first story. I'm going to read a story about some different animals. And some of them are in the wrong place. And you're going to tell me who's in the wrong place. In fact, I'm going to show you a picture of an animal in a, in a home. And you're going to tell me who really belongs in that home. Are you ready? Do lions live on lily pads? Yeah. Who lives on a lily pad? A frog. a frog. See, that's the way it works. Is this the nest of a goat? Yeah. Who lives in a nest? A bird. You think a bird, let's see. No, it belongs to a bird. You guys are right. Give yourselves a hand. Yay. Do crocodiles live in shells? No. Who lives in the shell? Snail. Snails do. Give yourselves another hand. You guys are doing great. Is this the burrow of a giraffe? Who might live in that burrow? Those holes in the ground are burrows. A groundhog. A groundhog is a really good guess. Anybody know of another animal that lives in a hole in the ground? A mole. Rabbits a live in a hole in the ground? A mole. A mole. Let's see. It belongs to a mole. Let's give her a hand. A chipmunk also lives down there. So you guys had a lot of good animals, but the book picked the mole to live down there. Do parakeets live in bowls of water? No. Who does? A fish. Let's see. 
fish do? Give yourselves another hand. Yay. Do guinea pigs live in webs? No, spiders do. Let's see. Spiders do. Give yourselves a hand. You guys are so smart. Do fleas live in fur? Mm. Yes. Yes. They do. Scratch, scratch, scratch. Does that kitty need a flea collar? Yes. Yeah, because a she, bath. she, and a bath, yeah. She doesn't want those fleas to be in her fur, but the fleas live there. Very good. Good job, everybody. Well, I have some animals, and they, they don't live in a bed, do they? But there they are, they're in a bed, these 10 wild animals. Now these 10 wild animals, we're going to do some subtracting and some adding. So you guys are really smart. Let's see, let's count to make sure we've got one, two, three, four, five. There's five at the head of the bed. Let's see how many are down at the foot of the bed. One, two, three, four, five. What is five and five? Ten, you are right. That's okay, ten fingers. that's right. That's ten fingers. Ten wild animals sleeping in the bed. Five at the foot and five at the head. One animal said, "This bed is too full." So he grabbed the blanket and he pulled and he pulled and he pulled some more until two wild animals fell to the floor. And they did it with a boom. Can you all be the boom with me? Boom. boom. Everybody one more time with a boom. Boom. Very good. All right, now we've got, if we had 10 and we, two animals fell to the floor. Seven. Let's count and see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Eight wild animals sleeping in the bed. Five at the foot and three at the head. One wild animal said, this bed is too full. So he grabbed the blanket and he pulled and he pulled and he pulled some more until one wild animal fell to the floor. Ready? Boom! Does anybody know how many wild animals? Should we count? Seven. You are right. We had eight and now we have seven. Seven wild animals sleeping in the bed. Four at the foot and three at the head. One wild animal said, this bed is too full. So he grabbed the blanket and he started to pull and he pulled and he pulled and he pulled some more until two wild animals fell to the floor. Ready? Boom! How many wild animals are left in the bed? Five. Five wild animals sleeping in the bed. Four at the foot and one at the head. One wild animal said, this bed is too full. So he grabbed the blanket and he pulled and he pulled and he pulled some more until four wild animals fell to the floor. Boom! Boom. One wild animal sleeping in the bed, zero at the foot and one at the head. This wild animal said, this is not right. I don't want to sleep alone tonight. So one wild animal sleeping in the bed, zero at the foot and one at the head. This wild animal said, this bed is not full. So he put out his paw and he started to pull and he pulled and he pulled and he pulled some more until four wild animals climbed up from the floor. How many wild animals do we have in the bed now? Six. One, two, three, four, five. Five wild animals sleeping in the bed. Four at the foot and one at the head. One wild animal said, this bed is not full. So he put his paw and he started to pull and he pulled and he pulled and he pulled some more until one wild animal climbed up from the floor. 
How many wild animals do we have in the bed? Six. We have six. Six wild animals sleeping in the bed. Four at the foot and two at the head. One wild animal said, this bed is not full. So he reached his paw out and started to pull. And he pulled and he pulled and he pulled some more until one wild animal climbed up from the floor. How many wild animals do we have? Seven wild animals sleeping in the bed, four at the foot and three at the head. One wild animal said, this bed is not full. So he put his paw out and started to pull. And he pulled and he pulled and he pulled some more until three wild animals climbed up from the floor. Ten wild animals sleeping in the bed, five at the foot and five at the head. One wild animal said, this is just right. So ten wild animals said, good night. Good job. Thanks for helping me. Okay, now this book is a book about whose house it is and who lives in what house. We get it wrong a lot. And what you guys are going to say, but not for me. Let's practice that. But not for me. So if it's a place where you don't want to live, you'll say, but not for me. Let's all practice it one time. I think we need all the mommies to help too. All right, ready, guys? You can say that as loud as you A lodge of twigs is a beaver's digs. Where can he be where he can be with his family? It's fine for beavers. Do you guys want to live in a in a but bunch of sticks? Not for me. But ready? But not for me. A nice hollow log is good when a frog needs to be alone in a place of his own. It's fine for frogs. Do you think he wants to live there? No. The leafy canopy of a sycamore tree keeps chickadees dry till the storm's gone by. It's fine for chickadees, but is it keeping the little boy dry? No, he's not happy there. When they worry, chipmunks scurry to a woodland glade in the forest shade. It's fine for chipmunks, but not for me. A thousand bees with a queen to please work in a maze of hive passageways. It's fine for bees, but what does he have all over him? Honey, sticky honey. Maybe that wouldn't be so bad. You could lick yourself then, right? Brown bats dwell in a pine hotel. Feet overhead, no need for a bed. It's fine for bats, but not for me. Look, he's upside down. Would you like to sleep like that? Yes. You think that would be fun? With a watchful eye, the owl stands by in the dark of the moon, hoping dinner comes soon. It's fine for owls, but not for me. Deer at night stay out of sight, curling up on the ground with trees all around. It's fine for deer, but not for me. Oh, look, the little boy's falling asleep. Zzz. Oh, he wakes up. Oh, stretches. Just ahead, there's a roof of red on a house of white with a little light and a wonderful welcome mat and a fluffy cat and a living room chair with my dad sitting there and a table set up with my dish and my cup and my warm little bed and the books that I've read and I know that look pretty comfortable? Yeah. It's just right for me. Do you guys have a house like that little boy? Mm -hmm. With a bed and a, maybe a, a daddy and a cup and a, and a plate in your house? 
Is it the perfect house? The perfect house? Let's see, I have a story about the perfect house. Let's see. Who lives in these houses? Uh, are you ready to see? A king lives in a castle. Uh, who lives here? Uh, mm, a spider. <gasps> nope. A ghost lives in a haunted house. And this little burrow deep in the ground is the perfect place for a mouse. In the city, people live in an apartment house. A bird lives in his nest made out of yarn. You see how he's made his nest out of yarn? All sorts of animals, cows and horses, live in a barn. Uh, who lives in that shell? A hermit crab lives in a shell. And owl lives in a, up in a tree. And a house, this is a very pretty house, is the perfect place for me. me. Those are all homes for different animals and people. Okay, now I have some different homes up here too. Did you notice my home? Yeah. This one made of straw and one made of sticks. Hmm, one made of bricks and hmm, look who's on the prowl. Is anybody afraid of him? Yeah. Would you like to touch him? Well, this is, who is this? A fox. Mm. The big bad wolf. Oh, is this one? Red Riding Hood. No, no, I don't. Baby wolves, I see. Are you a baby wolf? I don't think so. All right. This is the story of three pigs who went out and built some different houses. You know what the wolf does? He huffs and he puffs and he blows the houses down. So can you all practice that? He huffs and he puffs. And he blows the houses down. Well, once upon a time, there were three little pigs. There was a little pig who built himself a house. For he heard that the wolf was eating every pig he saw. Well, the old wolf, he saw that house made of straw. And he, ready? He huffed. And he puffed, and he ate that piggy up. Because that silly old pig had built his house out of straw, straw, straw. Well, there was another little pig who built himself a house out of twigs. Because he had heard that that wolf was eating all the pigs, pigs, pigs. Well, that wolf, he huffed, ready, puff, and he puffed, puff, and he ate that piggy up. For that silly little pig had built his house out of 
twigs, twigs, twigs. Well, there was another little pig who built himself a house. But he never thought of using straw or twigs. No, he built his house from bricks. Well, that wolf, he huffed, and he puffed, and he huffed, and he puffed. But that old wolf blew, but he could not blow enough because this pig got wise and built his house from bricks, bricks, bricks. You didn't get that pig. Okay, he left. Shall we knock on the door and see if there is a pig in here? Come in. There is the pig who built his house with bricks. Would you like to shake his hand because he's so smart? You may shake his hand. This was the wise pig because he built his house from bricks. Do you think he should go back in his house? Yes, because the wolf, you know, he could still be lingering by. All right, now, we are going to build a house. And does your house look a little bit like that? No. Do you live in a house like that? No. no? What's, how is this house different than your house? Does this have any bricks on it? No. 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 Does it have any siding on it? Yeah. Not much. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Do you think this house is just being built? Yeah. yeah. Let's I see think. all the people that have to build a house before you move in. Planning. That's the first thing you have to do. A family needs a new house. An architect draws a plan. See, he's got the plans. Construction begins. A bulldozer clears the site. A backhoe digs the hole for the basement. See how he's, the backhoe's digging the, the hole for the basement. A cement truck pours concrete. It makes a strong foundation. Look at the concrete coming out. A framing crew builds the floors, the walls, the roof. They hang the doors and the windows. So does it look like a house that you want to live in yet? No. Not yet. Roofers nail shingles on the roof. Vinyl siding is added to the outside of the house. There's the vinyl siding and here's the roof going on. Inside work, the electricians put in the wires, lights, and outlets. How many of you guys have lights in your house? Yeah, we all have lights in our house, don't we? Plumbers put in water pipes. They add toilets, bathtubs, and sinks. How many of you have a bathtub in your house? <laughs> I have a ginormous The plumber put... Oh, aren't you lucky? Oh, it's not mine. Oh. And she wants to send it. She wants to um, show it to Oh, I see. Workers put insulation in the walls, and that's to make it warm in the winter and cold in the summer. They hang drywall over it, when, then they get the walls ready for painting. Moving in. The house is finished. Now is it starting to look like your house? No. The family is ready to move in. And see, they've got all their treasures to take into their brand new house. So, that's what it takes to build a house. We're going to read some stories about some bears. Where do bears live? Do they live in a cave? This one's hibernating because it's winter, isn't it? So we're going to have, we'll put him right here. Bear's in his cave and he's snoring on. Can you all say that? Bear snores on. So a party's going to happen in his cave, but the bot... The bear snores 
on. That's your part. In a cave in the woods, in his deep dark lair, through the long cold winter sleeps a great brown bear. Cuddled in a heap with his eyes shut tight, he sleeps through the day and he sleeps through the night. The cold wind howls and the night sounds growl, but the bear snores on. An itty bitty mouse, pitter pat tiptoe, creep crawls in the cave from the fluff cold snow. Mouse squeaks, too damp, too dank, too dark. So he lights wee twigs with a small hot spark. The coals pip pop and the wind doesn't stop, but the bear snores on. Two glowing eyes sneak peek in the bend. Mouse cries, who's there? And a hare hops in. What's another name for a hare? A rabbit. A rabbit. Oh, mouse, says hare, long time no see. So they pop white corn and they brew black tea. Mouse sips, wee slurps. Hare burps, big burps. But the bear snores on. A badger scuttles by, sniff snuffs at the air. I smell yum yummy yums, perhaps we can share. I have brought honey nuts, badger says with a grin. Let's divvy them up, cozy down and dig in. And they nibble and they munch with a chew, chomp, crunch. But the bear snores on. A gopher and a mole tunnel up through the floor, then a wren and a raven flutter in through the door. Mole mutters, what a night, what a storm, twitters wren, and everybody clutters in the great bear's den. They tweet and they titter and they chat and they chitter, but the bear snores on. In a cave in the woods, a slumbering bear sleeps through the party in his very own lair. Hare stokes the fire, mouse seasons the stew. Then a small pepper flake makes the bear ah, 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 chew. He blows and he sneezes and the whole crowd freezes. And the bear wakes up. He bear gnarls and he snarls and he roars and he rumbles. Bear jumps and he stomps. Bear growls and he grumbles. You've snuck in my lair and you've had all the fun, but me, I was sleeping and I've had none. And he whimpers and he moans and he wails and he groans. And the bear blubbers on. Mouse squeaks, don't fret, don't fuss, look, see, we can pop more corn, we can brew more tea. Bear gulps, and he gobbles, and he sighs with delight. Then he spins tall tails through the blustery night. When the sun peeks up on a crisp, clear dawn, Bear can't sleep, but his friends snore on. So, now if we were going to tap, we're going to do on the, on the back side of our sheet, we're going to go tapping at the door. And if we tap at the door, let's go like this. Tap at the door, peep in. Turn the knob and walk right in and shut the door. All right, let's all do that. Ready? Tap at the door and peep in. Turn the knob and walk right in and shut the door. 
Now, if we want to build a house, like with a book that when we built the building the house, we can put our hands like that for the roof. Ready? This is the roof of the house so good. These are the walls that are made of wood. These are the windows that let in light. This is the door that shuts so tight. This is the chimney so straight and tall. What a good house for us one and all. Very good. All right, I have a story about a frog. Now, does anybody know where the frogs hibernate? Um, under, under trees, under trees. Not in trees. Under is right. Under, in the, in the mud around a lake. They, they burrow down in that squishy mud and go way deep so they won't freeze. This frog didn't do that. And let's see what happens. When Frog got up one morning, he realized at once that something was wrong with the world. Something had changed. He went to the window and was astonished to see that everything was completely white. He rushed outside in confusion. There was snow everywhere. It was slippery under his feet. Suddenly he felt himself falling backwards over down the bank into the river. But the river was frozen. Frog lay on his back on the cold, hard ice. If there's no water, I won't be able to wash, he thought. And he was shocked. Shivering with cold, he sat on the bank. Then Duck came toward him on her, his skates. Hello, she said. Nice weather today. Are you coming skating? No, I'm f freezing, replied Frog. But skating is good for you, said Duck. I'll teach you. So Duck gave Frog her skates and her scarf. She pushed him and he slid quickly across the ice, but not for long. Soon he fell. Aren't you enjoying yourself, said Duck. But Frog was nearly frozen solid and his teeth were chattering. You've got a warm feathery coat, but I'm just a bear frog, he said. You're right, said Duck. You'd better keep my scarf. Now I must be on my way. Then Pig appeared with a basket of firewood on his back. Aren't you freezing, Pig? asked Frog. Freezing, said Pig. No, I'm enjoying the fresh, healthy air. Winter is the most beautiful season. Well, you have a nice layer of fat to keep you warm. But what do I have? Poor Frog, thought Pig. I wish I could help him. One, two, one, two ran up. He was jogging in the snow. Hooray, he called joyously. Exercise makes you healthy. Ex hooray for exercise. Three cheers for exercise. Why don't you join in, Frog? It's great fun to keep fit. I'm for 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 easing, replied Frog. You've got a warm fur coat, but I have nothing. Sadly, he went home. The next day, his friends invited him to have a snowball fight. But Frog couldn't share in the fun. I'm freezing. I'm only a bear frog, murmured, and he miserably stumbled home. He sat next to the fire for the rest of the day, dreaming of spring and summer. He burned every last piece of wood. When the fire went out, he went outside to gather more logs. But he couldn't find any wood in the snow. He walked and walked until he lost his way. Everything was white. Exhausted, he lay down in the snow. A bear frog. And there his friends found him. I'm freezing, whispered frog. Come on, said hare. And carefully they carried him home and put him to bed. Hare collected and lit a fire. Pig cooked a soup. And duck cheered frog up. In the evenings, everyone lived while Hare read wonderful stories about spring and summer. Meanwhile, Pig knitted Frog a warm pullover in two colors. Frog enjoyed the attention from his friends. Winter is wonderful when you can spend it in bed. Then the day came when Frog was well enough to get up. Without fur, 
fat or feathers, but dressed in his new pullover, he took his first steps in the snow. Asked Hare curiously. It's good, answered Frog bravely. So the long winter passed, but one morning when Frog opened his eyes, he noticed at once that something was different. Bright light streamed in the window. Quickly, he jumped out of bed and ran outside. The world was bright green and the sun shone in the sky. Hooray, he cried. It's good to be a frog. How wonderful. I can feel the sun's rays on my bare back. His friends were happy to see Frog so cheerful. What would we do without Frog, laughed Hare. Can't think, said Pig. No, agreed Duck. Life just wouldn't be the same without him. So next year, do you think Frog should hibernate throughout the winter? Yeah. I think so. I think he'd be happier if he did that. Well, we are going to do a little song called Where is Bear? But not only Where is Bear, but Where are some other puppets? So I'm going to give everybody a puppet, and then who would like to be a bear? Where it's going to go. I'm, we're going to sing the song, and we can all sing it together. It's over on the back. Of, it's Where is Bear? And we're going to sing the song, and then if your animal, if we sing your animal, then you're going to come up and show everybody your animal, and then it's going to go, I'm going to sing it once, and then we're going to do it. It's where is go. bear? Where is bear? Here I am. Here I am. How are you this winter? Very tired. Thank you. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. So when uh, you hear your animal, you'll come up. And you'll say that you're tired. You'll sing the song. And then when we say go to sleep, you'll go back to your, where you're sitting and put your animal to sleep. So at the end, all the animals will be asleep, hibernating. Are you ready? So you listen for your animal. And you don't come up. You'll come up right up here and look at your mommies when, when, you ha when we start the song. Okay? We're starting with bears. So here we go. Where is Bear? Where is Bear? Here I am. Here I am. How are you this winter? Very tired, thank you. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. All right, put him to sleep now. Where is Rabbit? Where is Rabbit? Here I am, here I am. How are you this winter? Very tired, thank you. Go to sleep, go to sleep. Go put your rabbits to sleep now. Where is, I don't think, did anybody pick the groundhog? Yes, where is groundhog? Where is Groundhog? Here I am. Here I am. How are you this winter? Very tired, thank you. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Where is Chipmunk? Where is Chipmunk? Here I am. Here I am. Here he is. Wait a minute. There he is. Here we go, Mommy. You just come right along with that chipmunk. Here we go. How are you this winter? Very tired. Thank you. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Where are frogs? Where are frogs? Here I am, here I am. Here he comes. Why don't you bring him up? You bring him up, big sister. You bring him up, you're, you're the other frog. You can come up too. You just put your sleeping bear down and bring him up. You can bring him up. He needs your help. Where are frogs? Where are frogs? Here I am. Here I am. How are you this winter? Very tired, thank you. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Where is raccoon? Where is the raccoon? 
Here she is. Here she is. She almost was here. Come on up with me. Come on up and show me the raccoon. How are you this winter? How are you this winter? Very tired. Thank you. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Here, you stay right here. Everybody bring up your sleepy, tired animal. Show me how your sleepy, tired animal is still asleep. That's a sleeping, hibernating bunny and bear. Show me all your sleeping animals. Very good. Now, look at your mommies and take a bow. Take a bow. Yay. Very good. I have and one more story about a, this is Granny Rose. And she lives in a house with her dog. And her dog's name is Henry. Is that a silly name for a dog? No. Isn't that a cozy place where Granny Rose lives? No. Well, you know what? Before the end of the story, she's not in that house anymore, but she's, she's in a cave with a bear. Let's find out what happens. Don't just lay there like a sack of potatoes, Henry, Granny Rose smiled. It's time to wake up. Granny Rose lived with her old dog, Henry, in the foothills of the Ozark Mountains. Every morning, she and Henry went for a walk before breakfast. I thought we'd head up to Lookout Ridge today, said Granny Rose. Nothing like watching the sunrise to warm you up on a cold winter morning. Granny Rose loved to walk in the mountains. Henry did too, especially if, found, if he found rabbits to chase along the way. After a while, they came to the edge of a rocky cliff. Looks like we made it just in the nick of time, she said. They sat down and looked out over the valley below. Now, Henry, you be careful, she warned. I don't want you wiggling so much you fall off. You want to see what it looks like? Do we want Henry to fall off there? No, that'd be a long way down for Henry, but isn't that pretty? I reckon there ain't nothing prettier than that. Hey, eh, Henry, said Granny Rose. Now let's get on home. We've got a big day ahead of us. As they walked back down the mountain, the wind grew much colder. Thick clouds drifted in and covered the warm morning sun. Looks like we might be in for some rough weather, said Granny Rose. Big, thick snowflakes began to fall all around them. As the snow came down harder and harder, Granny Rose began to worry. We better find shelter, Henry, she shouted. I think we walked smack dab into a blizzard. Henry? Henry? Where are you? Off in the distance, Granny Rose could hear barking. She followed the sound. There you are. What did you find, boy? What? Why, it's a cave, she exclaimed. Good dog, Henry. We can rest in here till the thing blows over. Granny Rose and Henry curled up together in a, to stay nice and dry and warm. But they were wet and tired from being outside, and they soon drifted off to sleep. <coughs> Henry, Henry, was that you? Granny Rose asked, awakened by the noise. It wasn't Henry. It was coming from somewhere in the cave, somewhere close. Granny reached out in the darkness and touched something. It was warm and mm, furry and big. It was a bear. Be still, Granny Rose whispered in a ver to a very frightened Henry. We don't want to wake him up. But as they watched the bear, he moaned and groaned and tossed this way and that way. He rolled on his belly, then he rolled on his back. Well, that poor fella, he's having a terrible time of sleeping, she said. Granny Rose looked a little closer at the bear and said, Hmm, just like I figured. Well, I know just the trick. And with that, she grabbed the bear's paw and she shoved it right into his mouth. Hmm, said the bear, and then he was quiet. Look at that, Henry, Granny Rose chuckled. He's sleeping like a baby. I guess what my daddy always used to tell me is true, because bears really...
to suck their paws during their long winter nap. His must have fallen out of his mouth and he was just too sleepy to put it back in. Granny Rose looked outside and saw that the snowstorm had was over. Looks like it's time for us to be on our way. Thanks for the use of your home, Mr. Bear. Sleep tight, she said, and she waved goodbye. Well, Henry, said Granny Rose, how about some breakfast? And are they headed back to Granny Rose's little cabin? Yeah. Yeah. So we saw where Granny Rose slept and where the bear slept. Put our picture books away before we start on our bear caves. Ready? Put away your picture book. Put away your ball. Happy times go quickly by for people big and small. Goodbye to you. Goodbye to you. Goodbye to all. And thanks for coming for Stories at the Library.